a street lighting LED module dropped off by a local street lighting company for exploration. This is a Philips Legion. It's a sort of really chunky, well heat sink module for street lighting. And they said, uh, we've had a few of these fail. And they failed within their warranty period, but they were told, nah, they're discontinued now. You're onto plums. That is it. So they're wondering, are they fixable? Uh, let's investigate that and find out. Although having said that, if one LED has started failing, then possibly that's an indication that lots of things are going to progressively fail. Let's find a suitable tool for this. I'm going to get out the Vera, courtesy of Jake. Let's see if I can get it the first time. Let's see if I can get it the first time. Probably not. I didn't get it the first time. That's okay. What about this one? Is it going to fit? It's a very chunky unit. I'm quite intrigued by the way the skid mark has gone up the way here. That's odd. Let's remove. It appears to be, although it's got one solid panel for the LEDs, it appears to have three separate sections of the plastic lens covers. The lens covers that are going to deflect the light sort of sideways and also out into the road from the lamp post for maximum efficiency. Let's see what type of LEDs these are as well. This is quite interesting. And how they're wired. Are they all in series or are they series parallel? We shall soon find out. I'm going to have to prise this up. Oh, well, that's odd. Right. That is an odd way to feel. Why has it gone up the way like that? Oh, I see. Okay. So, and I think we'll get a close-up on this. One moment, please. Okay. What we've got here is quite a significant piece of damage. I thought it might have just been nibbling away at the copper track, just eroding it back. But in reality, it has been arcing onto the aluminium substrate at the back. I'm not sure if that's down to a potential difference from the, the DC2 ground, uh, or if it's just maybe been burning along that track. But I do get the feeling it's been eroding to ground. Uh, this is the, the positive end feeds into this LED pin, which is positive. It goes through the LED, and then it goes onto this negative plate, uh, which then goes to the feeds into the positive of the next LED and then it's on this large heat sink plate again. So each of these big huge islands has this track and if I move this away, I shall just tame this down a little bit, taming down. I can show you if I bring in the meter and I put it to continuity and I go on to the aluminium side, the substrate here, you can see that it's actually gone right through to the substrate there. That's odd. So what really comes to mind here? It could be repaired, but it's going to kind of compromise it as its original street light. It'd be all right in areas which was less critical. But I would say that this island here has been compromised, so I'd, I want rid of that island completely. And that is effectively connecting to that LED. So I wouldn't really want an electrical connection there. So that kind of wipes out that LED. And this island is definitely compromised. So I would probably end up removing this LED, this LED, and this LED, and then I would bridge a wire. Let's grab another color for this. From this pad here, just a thin uh, wire, because it's only about 700 milliamps, and I'd bridge it across onto this. And that means that though it would be nice to get that other LED to light, but it's not going to happen, but that would means that the... Uh, with these three LEDs removed, it would complete the circuit. And they are all in series, these LEDs. It's quite a high voltage. Let me just work that out for you, the voltage of this. Let's bring in the kink calculator. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by six LEDs. Eight times six equals 48 LEDs times roughly three volts each. It's 144 volts. Um, what will actually happen here at the 700 milliamps? Well, just let's calculate this times 0.7 equals roughly about 100 watts, this, this street light. Um, what will happen is it will simply, it will reduce 
the output by these three LEDs and that will create a little dark patch over at the side on the road because of the way these lenses are arranged but it won't be too dramatic um, because they're all in unison it will just re result in a small reduction of intensity and it means this module could then be put back into use but the question is if this has happened already is it going to cause problems that other uh, lights I'll tell you what I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this I think I may actually have to remove this solid this whole panel and that will mean applying heat sink compound again because to actually this is a heat sinking panel so it's going to be very very hard to solder but i'm going to try soldering directly on with a wire link just experimentally and we'll see what happens one moment please okay let's continue to be able to even solder this on i had to heat this whole plate up to a very high temperature i had to heat it up to about 80 degrees celsius by putting this heat sink on a hot plate and blocking the sides if i was doing it again i might actually just remove the top aluminium panel but then i'd have to know what's a heat sink compound they were using here hopefully the heat because it's still quite hot isn't going to affect there's a temperature sensor in here an ntc thermistor which feeds down to the zitanium driver down here uh, but I have hooked it up, I've connected a temporary earth connection onto the chassis here, one onto the chassis there, I'm about to power up and we shall see, will it light or will it go bang and put all, all the power to the house? It's lit. Oh, and it ramped up gently. Oh, that's not a bad weight. That is, I would call that a wormish light. It's not bad. So uh, the answer is, right, tell you what, tell you what, I want to see what this thing's drawing now. Let's bring in the... Happy. Let's just wedge the hoppy in at an angle here. So the hoppy goes on. I would say it was drawing about 100 watts before. Let's tell you what, let's get the kink calculator in. That was 48 LEDs, wasn't it? It's now three less. Oh, incidentally, the LEDs, to get them off, I gripped them with a pair of pliers and twisted them. As is common, it just severs the solder joints without damaging the tracks. So that was eight times six it was 48 minus three equals it's 45 leds times three volts roughly uh is 135 volts times 0.7 because this uh, driver's set for that uh that will give about 95 watts 94.5 it says give or take some losses let's try this out here is the hoppy The hoppy says 100 watts, actually. That's close enough. So it must have just been running slightly higher than that before. Power factor 0.956. That's pretty good. So uh, that has fixed it. It's not going to be too bothered by those missing LEDs because it is a current limited supply. If anything, it means this whole panel is going to run that little bit cooler. So that is a fix of sorts. I say it's a fix of sorts because there's a certain element of liability if you do something like that because... Uh, particularly in a road, if there was a crash or something, you you know, you can't really... If they discovered that the light had been tinkered with and that sections of the LEDs were out, I mean, it's unlikely. You probably wouldn't see it from down below. I don't think it's going to have that much effect on the illumination because it's not like that the LEDs at that side cast off in that particular direction. And the lens does still fit on, although, to be honest, the solder does raise it up that little bit, which is going to affect its focal distance. So if I was actually going to do this, I'd probably dremel a section of the lens out. That's going to make it worse, isn't it? That's going to make it even more obviously tinkered with. But uh, the thing is that for a low critical area, you know, just a general illumination street light in an area that wasn't so critical, this could be a fix. But the question is, if one has failed, is it going to result in others failing? And uh, particularly if that one's failed in such a way it's caused uh, maybe... It doesn't look like Bond failed in these LEDs. If you look at that picture, it does look like it's not like the LED Bond itself failed in here. It appears to be the connection onto the end failed on the package. Was it a solder joint failure or was it the actual connection inside? It looks like connection inside, but then you can't really tell. But interesting failure, interesting fix. So uh, I shall let the guy know that uh, I've tinkered with this and I'll just send in this video. In fact, it's the best bet. And uh, they are fixable, but for a sort of less critical area. But there we go. Interesting stuff. 
Uh, so that's uh, one of the Philips Legends. Uh, and it's not quite lasted the rated lifespan and it's uh, just suffered the usual failure. One LED causes problems. Unusual that it ended up tracking onto the case though. I wonder if that uh, is because the output of the, the DC output is actually referenced to ground because the open circuit voltage of this thing is about 300 volts. It's just short of 300 volts. It's 296 volts, I think. 296 volts. So uh, they're probably just, for some reason, just keeping below 300 there. Uh, but there we go. Interesting video. Interesting fix. And it kind of sorted it.